The practice of medicine has changed so much in the past 50 years, even really in 10, uh, not just in the remarkable tools and the medical procedures we now use, uh, in the miraculous pharmaceuticals we employ, but also in the people who provide us with health care. So on this edition of Health Talk, you're going to meet one of those new health professionals. Hello, I'm Jay Noreen, and welcome to Health Talk. We all know about doctors and nurses that we see and other kinds of medical specialists, but since the 1970s, we've seen many new categories of people who deliver care for us in our health care system. So today, please meet Matt Howard, a physician assistant at Ortho Carolina here in Boone. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. You know, there are probably quite a few people uh, who haven't seen a physician assistant and uh, may not know a whole lot about what a physician assistant is. So today, we're going to have a chance to get people to know what a physician assistant really is. Mm. So let's start just kind of from the beginning. How would you describe the role of physician assistant? Uh, the role of, of a physician assistant is basically a physician extender. You know, we, we were started, the profession was started by physicians. Um, we train alongside physicians. Um, it is a graduate program following a, a bachelor's degree that, that you earn. Um, and we're trained in vast um, specialties and, and in general medicine. Um, a lot of people do end up going into a specialty other than just uh, general medicine or internal medicine. Um, but again, we, we look to provide excellent patient care alongside the physician. We do practice independently just uh, like physicians do. We're independently uh, governed and licensed by the medical board as they are as well. Um, and we just work technically um, as with a supervising physician and, and within that scope of practice, um, again, look to provide the same quality of care as, as a physician would do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk more about the interaction with, with the physician. And I know you've had a lot of experience in a couple of practices. But t tell us a little more about what is the educational process to become a, P a PA? Um, again, it's a um, following a bachelor's degree, so four years degree. It's general prerequisites and uh, training as you would look to get in college as you were if you were looking to go on to medical school. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the same majors that you see people who've gone on the medical school with. Um, it's then a um, drawn out um, applicant process and interviewing process that you get into to try to get accepted into a, the graduate program. It's then followed by um, two and a half, three years worth of uh, kind of training. It's basically comprised of medical school into four, um, two and a half years versus four years like medical school is. Um, same curriculum, same everything. We're, we're taught by physicians and, and are trained alongside physicians during that time. Uh, and then we look to uh, go into whatever specialty after the fact. Mm -hmm. Well, having gone through medical school myself, I kind of know how that, that, uh, that goes. And, you know, typically you have a little clinical experience in medical school mm -hmm. in the first and second year, but most of it's in the third and fourth mm -hmm. year. How does that flow for a PA? Yeah, they have a big, the first 15 months or so is, is the grueling kind of didactic year. Mm -hmm. Um, the following year, year and a half, is the more of the clinical side. They do mix in some clinical time during the didactic year, but mm -hmm. the more clinical side is, is in the later stages where you do, we typically do about six weeks um, worth of training in each specialty of medicine. Uh, and then depending on what program will decide on how many electives they may give you to choose if you wanted to, if you thought you were going to specialize in some form of medicine that you can choose to do an elective at that time to, my name, my, my, mine was orthopedics and that's where I got most of my orthopedic training specialty was during that elective period. So we didn't, we didn't mention that at the, at the beginning. You're, you're specifically an orthopedic PA. That's where you spend all your well, time. Well, I do basically. now, yes. Um, there, you basically, you don't go to a PA orthopedic program. Mm -hmm. um, it's a physician assistant uh, is, a, is a general PA program where you, like I said, it's all general-based medicine like you would as you learn in medical school. Um, 
you do the more specialized training as you kind of are weaning out of the PA program and then when you've gone into clinical practice as well as when you were doing your clinical rotations while in school and you've done some of those specialized surgical training or mm -hmm. different things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you uh, have then, it seems like, rotations through pediatrics, internal medicine, all of the kind of main specialties mm -hmm. as a PA during your two and a half years or so. That's right. Uh, so, so you really have that same, same kind of experience in, in a way as a medical student. That's right? absolutely right. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, can you tell us a little bit about how the whole idea evolved? When did it start? You, you probably know a bit about the history. When did it start and how has it evolved and how big are P, our PA programs around the country now? Are there quite a few? Yeah, there, there are and it's continuing to grow, um, you know, as the need for medicine has and, um, you know, we're particularly in the primary care field, you know, there's definitely a shortage of physicians as well as mid-level physician extenders. Um, the role has evolved um, and it probably will continue to evolve, but um, it was really, I would, I, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on this, but um, was started in the late 1960s. Um, the first program was at Duke University, um, first PA program, and there are many uh, PA programs, not only in the state of North Carolina, but across the country. Mm -hmm. um, so. Now you you uh, uh, did your program in Georgia, I think you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Uh, what got you interested? How, how did you yeah. get to the point where you said, you know, I think I'd like to explore being a PA? How got you going? Yeah, I always was interested in, in medicine. I, I had a strong sports background in high school and, and just kind of throughout my life and um, had some close family friends who one was an orthopedic surgeon and one was a PA. but. Um, so I was kind of drawn in that direction, was exposed to it at an early age, and definitely through my sports career. Um, uh, but it, it, I was really, when I was in college, I always thought, because I really was like the sports medicine side of things, that I was going to go more into the physical therapy role. Uh, and I spent a lot of time um, working as a physical therapy tech and different things when I was in college and getting exposure to some patient care and things like that and, and um, really at that point was when I realized that I kind of wanted something a little more uh, medicine based and a little more um, kind of in the role of treating patients and, and things versus the role that the phys um, physical therapy um, team provides for the patient. Mm -hmm. how, how does a PA fit into the team? I know probably for you, particularly in orthopedics, uh, PT is a, certainly yeah. a partner, and of course the, your surgeons, uh, your orthopedic surgeons are partners, nurses are partners. How do, you, how do you see the team working together? I expect with, for a PA, you really are very team oriented. Yeah, Can you, you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, you know, in a, in a lot of different roles it depends, you know, it is very critical to our profession and, and, and job satisfaction to, to be with a good team and in particular a good supervising physician and, and doctor. Um, so. It is, again, team-oriented. Um, I, I would say the biggest part of what we do, particularly I would say in North Carolina setting here in Boone, is we, we see a lot of acute patients, a lot of the first-time patients, uh, and we, we really work the patient through the conservative treatment options um, that are out there. You know, not everybody needs surgery. Um, and so there's majority of patients we're able to get them better and get them healed um, without surgical management. And so that's probably the role we do the most here in Boone is work these patients through, get them treated, um, get them through whatever conservative options there are for their specific diagnosis. Uh, and then if it comes to, you know, where their, the surgical indication is there or they have failed conservative treatment, uh, we then move them along to our specialized physicians that we have in Boone. Um, to fill that need. Um, we do, um, as PAs, do surgery with our supervising physician. Um, I currently do cases with Dr. Califf here in Boone, um, and we do provide a lot of uh, assistance in that, in that area, doing a lot of different things just depending on the need at the mm -hmm. time. So you actually do spend a fair amount of time in the, in the operating okay. room as yes, well. Sir. Let, me, let me ask you about this. I, I know you, you have broad training when you start out, but you got into orthopedics. So I'm a patient and I've not seen a PA before. I'm going to a practice, a primary care practice now, taking out of yeah. what you're doing now, but so I'm, and I'm gonna walk into the practice and you know, I'm there for, you know, some, maybe I have diabetes or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna get 
aim toward a PA and how is my experience going to be, let's say as a new patient yeah. to that practice who has never seen a PA before? How, how's that, how, what's that personal experience from the patient perspective? Yeah, you know, it is some, you do see that, you know, um, even though we've been around, like you said, since the 1960s, 70s, you still see have, and it's amazing, you still have a lot of people who are new to the profession or, or haven't seen a PA before. Um, so I would think that, again, you could expect to, even in the primary care role, my wife's a, a, a PA as well, and, and she is in the internal medicine and primary care role in emergency medicine-based medicine. So we are in different areas of medicine, but you can expect to receive the same kind of high-quality treatment. Um, we do the same thing that the physician does as far as uh, seeing the patients, uh, talking to them, educating them, diagnosing them, and coming up with a treatment plan. Um, we are, uh, I think, pride ourselves as a profession to not try to assume the role of the physician in a way that um, we try to pretend that we're the doctor and not the PA. I think we the PAs are really uh, again, pride ourselves on to know our role and know our place in the team. But again, we're there to be the physician in some way. We've been trained to do that. Um, we're trained to diagnose and treat. So we expect to provide the same excellent care that the physician would, mm -hmm. um, but educate the patient on different options and, and make them feel comfortable with seeing the PA. Draw, draw if you would, a, a distinction between the physician and the PA from the patient perspective. What's What's the same and what's different? There clearly are some differences, but there's a lot the same, too. Yeah, I mean, there is a lot the same. Again, you know, the far as the initial general-based medicine training goes, it's, it's very equal. I mean, ours is medical school combined into two and a half versus four years. We just don't do the residency side mm -hmm. that the physicians do. Um, so the, the physicians do have a lot more um, training beyond medical school. Um, when they do the residency that we did not get, um, we kind of get it more as we get out and, and do our initial training with particularly the physician that we may have been hired on. Um, so, you know, I think part of being a good PA in, in making the patient feel comfortable, if there are issues or questions or, you, or we don't feel comfortable with something that we may be seeing in the patient or, or whatever it may be, we always are, are able to take a step back and say, you know, let's see what Dr. So-and-so might would mm -hmm. think about the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we kind of err on their side of expertise as well. Well, you know, it's, it's been said that uh, physicians get their MD degree about halfway to really becoming practicing yeah. physicians because of what you said, yeah. residency training. And I, and I think most people uh, in the general public know that yeah. after medical school, then you do residency yeah. and it's at least three years and for an orthopedic surgeon, it's seven yeah. or so. Yeah. So it's a lot of time, longer in many cases than the medical school experience. Absolutely. So the PA in contrast, at that point of a little short of the MD, that's where you start practice basically. Yeah. Whereas yeah. uh, it's several years later that the, so that, that's one of the clear distinctions. One of the clear distinctions. And, and some of the, they've tried to kind of put timelines together to see in, in some, particularly in orthopedics, I'm not sure much about the general medicine uh, primary care setting, but they think, they say in, in, in orthopedic side that when it comes to PA timeline and, and comparing it to a surgeon, you could expect probably three years of experience to, for a PA to have had to gain after from um, PA school um, that they feel like you've kind of been through almost a residency. And that's um, with your principal partner yeah. uh, physician, physician or orthopedic yeah. surgeon yeah. Or, or whoever it is or internist Basically. if you're working in primary care. That's right. Yeah, so you're really kind of learning on the job in Doing many ways. Lot, yeah. uh, what about licensure? How does licensure work? You know, there's obviously complicated licensure for physicians. How does that work for PAs? How do you get licensed? We get um, licensed. We're accredited. Um, and so you'll see a lot of times behind our name the letter C, and that means board certified. Uh, and um, pretty much in all the states now that you have to be board certified to practice medicine. Okay. There was at a time you, you didn't. Um, and some physicians, you know, they can still practice without being board certified. They just can't call themselves board certified. In our case, we do have to be board certified. So once we do graduate um, from PA program, we go on and take our boards and uh, pass your boards, and then you have to apply to your state licensure. Um, again, we are independently licensed by the medical board uh, alongside, just like physicians are. 
Um, and then every so often, it was six years now, the our um, academy uh, has changed every 10 years, similar to physicians, we have to go back and take our national boards again. I actually just did that several months ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's basically everything that I was uh, taught and trained in PA school. Mm -hmm. I have to go back and try to pull some of that stuff out of the archives to, to remember to do the board again. Um, now there's there's uh, another type of physician extender, nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. uh, that has, you know, a master's level mm -hmm. like PAs. How do you, how do you uh, see the sameness and difference of PAs and nurse practitioners? Good question. You know, in, in, in the gist of things, they, we do pretty much provide the same kind of care in the medical field. You know, we are physician extenders. We are there to provide excellent patient care alongside uh, a physician. Probably the big difference um, between the two of us are we, um, I would say, are more closely trained by physicians uh, than they are. Uh, and we are independently licensed and managed and governed by the medical board like mm -hmm. physicians are where they're more governed by the nursing mm -hmm. and board. And I'd say that's the biggest difference between mm -hmm. the two of us. Now, do you have any nurse practitioners in your, in your practice? We do in Ortho Carolina as a whole. Um, we do not in our location in Boone. Have you worked in, in your career with nurse practitioners very much? I have much. And how, t how does that work? What's, what's the relationship? What's the I would say, you know, very, you know, colleague-like, you know. Mm -hmm. um, again, we are, are there to, the main goal is to provide excellent patient care, uh, first and foremost. Um, and again, we, we're essentially doing the same job. Um, how we got there is a little different. Um, but again, I think the level of uh, experience and education is similar. Mm -hmm. um, we're just licensed uh, uh, differently. You know, we're thinking about this mostly from the point of view of the audience out there that are patients and mm -hmm. maybe have or haven't seen PAs, and so we want, to, want people to know uh, what that's all about. But there's another group out there that it would be kind of interesting to, to speak to, and that's where you were when you were a senior in high yeah. school. And, you know, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do in my career, and, gee, I don't know much about PAs. What, what kind of advice or insights would you give to that senior in high school or sophomore in college that's thinking, you know, I might like to learn more about what it might be like to be a PA. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, you know, there's a lot of information out there, you know, that you can find on the internet that can give you an idea of some basic stuff. If you do have a strong interest, interest you know, you can uh, go to different locations and see if, if they can let you do some shadowing. I mm -hmm. get students all the time that come and shadow. Um, you know, we get more leveled um, students who are, are either about to go on to PA school or who were in PA school and we're doing more closely educational training. But um, if you really are interested at more the um, level of the high school student, you know, kind of read up on it, decide if that's something you're really interested in, and then get your, you know, get, in, get your foot in the door and, and see as far as shadowing experiences go. It's gotten a little harder the way medicine has gone with HIPAA laws and all kind of things, but mm -hmm. um, we- is the privacy law. The that, privacy that law, um, you know, we, but we still have students that do. We just have to, they ha we have to put them through a little uh, privacy law kind of training sure. prior and do all that kind of stuff, but then we get them in there and, and, and that's probably the best way to see if that's something- Now what, what about in, in Boone, if I'm in, if I'm in high school or if I'm an undergrad at App State? How would I find out? How can I come and shadow for a while? But what would I? Who would I call? What would I do? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the easiest thing to do is probably call the local office. We do have a lot of offices across the state of North Carolina. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is call the local office, ask to speak to whatever office manager uh, is there. They can get you in touch with that person. Um, ours here is Beverly Marsh, a very nice lady, and, and she can get you hooked up with the right people. They come and contact the providers, whether that's the PAs or the doctors, and see if, if we have time to work that in our schedule. Or now is the, the, the Academy of PAs, there's probably a chapter in North Carolina, I would guess, oh, yes. right? Oh, yeah. Is that a resource for, for people who are interested? Yeah, in they can go the on to the, the North Carolina Academy's um, website and see there's um, would definitely be some resources there to look into. Okay. So that is that the right name, Academy of Physician Assistants? It's um, North, Carolina, North Carolina Academy of Physician Assistants. Yes. Okay. Good thing to remember for yep. those people watching who uh, are about the age where they're trying That's to make right. a decision about what's, what's happening next. Uh, you know... Uh, I know there are quite a few PAs in, in North Carolina, but do you have a sense of how many in North Carolina and how it compares to the rest of the country? Yeah, I, I wish I could give you a specific number. I'm, I'm, I've only been in North Carolina about two years now, so I'm not exactly sure, okay. um, to be honest with you. 
Um, again, it's a number that's really growing. Um, we do have a new PA program actually here at App State. Yeah, tell um, me about that program. What do you know about the App State program? Um, well, it's, it's fairly new. new, so it's still coming aboard. It's it's a partnership with the Wake Forest program out of Winston. Um, and um, kind of a, a branch here through the Appalachian uh, program and we see some students from time to time. They're, the first class is just kind of getting through their didactic year so we're not, I haven't, I personally haven't seen a lot of the students coming out doing their cl clinicals or their rotational stuff um, but I think it's a great thing for the, the, the university and, and the town of Boone. Now will you be doing some teaching in the program? Um, we, I haven't personally been contacted yet to do any preceptor stuff. Uh, I'm sure that will come as the program evolves and grows. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that I, I expect uh, that people don't, don't know, uh, and that is in terms of a patient being seen by a PA, a physician, a nurse practitioner, what is the cost difference? Is, is, there, a, is there a difference in how insurance, I suppose there is, in how insurance pays and What's the meaning of that to the patient? Yeah, the, yes and no. There's some discrepancy there. There's some not, depending on the insurance company. Mm -hmm. um, again, don't quote me on this, but I think um, some of the um, Medicaid, Medicare uh, plans, I think they are, it's more of on a scale. I think it's an 80% uh, reimbursable rate on a, for whatever the normal physician fee is. Okay. Uh, and then normal commercial care, it's, it's the same. Oh, it is? Um, okay. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, it's what you might call discounted? Yep. In some cases, uh, it may be, and some, some it's not. Again, you know, I mean, I think um, as a profession, um, we pride ourselves to, be pro to provide the excellent patient care that the normal physician mm -hmm. would. So um, I wouldn't call what we provide discounted care yeah. um, by no means. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I meant that only in a financial yeah. sense, not in yeah, a yeah, yeah. quality sense. But... Uh, but I would expect that might be a question people yeah. would wonder about, yeah. uh, how, that, how that really works. You know, it would be helpful, I think, from the point of view of patients out there, to kind of give us a, what's a day like or what's a week like for you and how do you interact with other professionals, but just uh, however you could describe, what's my day typically as a PA? Yeah, you know, it is, it is quite busy it, and it varies from practice to practice and, and different scopes of practice. Um, you know, I've been in settings where, you know, it may be a seven day a week kind of job, um, depending on the role you fit or the role that supervising physician wants to, you to fill. Um, and a lot of that just depends on their goal um, in terms of the practice. I'd say here, um, you know, it's a five day a week kind of uh, thing. I do mostly surgery on Mondays with Dr. Califf, which pretty much fulfills my day on that day. Uh, and then the rest of the, day I'm, of the week I'm in the office seeing patients. I'd say on a full day, um, I'd, I probably average 20 to 25 people a day. Mm -hmm. um, it's been really busy this summer, which is our usually our busier time of the year, so I'm probably seeing closer to, to 30 people in a full mm -hmm. day, um, and that kind of makes up the rest of my week seeing patients in the office. Mm -hmm. When you're in the OR, on, as you say, on Monday, what's your role in relationship to the, to the orthopedic surgeon that you're working with? Yeah, um, a lot there is to kind of really initiate the case to get started uh, and to assist uh, during the case doing different various tasks, you know, every, all that varies from what surgical procedure you may do and may be doing, you know, I, I kind of get there, try to get there, you know, before um, Dr. Califf has time to get some of his stuff together, he'll go visit with the patient, do some of the paperwork, and I can be back there setting up, uh, getting the patient ready, um, prepped and draped, and, um, and get some things done that we do in our normal routine prior to mm -hmm. making any uh, skin incision or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it varies as the surgical case goes on um, and a lot depends on again the surgical procedure that's going on. Yeah. I do a lot of the closing at the end of the surgery um, that way he can um, move on, go talk to the family, do a lot. There's you know unfortunately in the area of medicine we practice there's a lot of paperwork um, which takes a, takes a lot of time, takes time away from some patient care mm -hmm. which is uh, sad but uh, nonetheless it lets him move on to the next thing and sure. get things situated for the next case yeah so you might you might close for example and that's he, right he, he might yeah. leave and you you make clo close yeah I clo the, I'll close and, and he can he can move on and go do dictate the chart or sure. go see the family and um, kind of get the next case moving yeah. forward now uh, have there been times when you've seen a patient for the first time who's never seen a PA before and they might say you know 
what are you and, and uh, do you ever have a kind of a tense situation where you have to kind of explain things to, to Yeah, I mean you do run across that from time to time again like, you know as long as the profession has been around you still see people who sure. don't who aren't a hundred percent aware of what we do or who we are um, I think it's definitely less than it used to be uh, and I would say here particularly in North Carolina um, the f patient is very well educated or been told who they were going to see prior to their visit. Um, we practice pretty independently here in Boone and so I have my own list of patients that we typically mm -hmm. see in a day and so they, they know who they're going to see usually before they get there. So here it's not much of an issue but if mm -hmm. it does you, 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 know, you educate them and you usually can get them through the, the issue yeah. situation. Yeah. So. Well, Matt, it's, it's fascinating, uh, and I, since I taught in the PA program in the Army 40 years ago, I'm particularly yeah. interested to hear how your career has taken well, off. Uh, that was the very early stages yeah. of the PA program, and, uh, and Duke was, was a model, University of Washington, so North Carolina has a history for yeah, PAs that's uh, pretty powerful. So thank you. We yes, really sir. appreciate your coming. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. Well, that's Health Talk for this week. If you have questions or comments for us, uh, you can reach us through our website at watchapptv.com. So until next time, I'm Jay Noreen.